<laughs> the local people. It's different than the rest of the stuff I hear. I love the show. I listen every day. WRLR. Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Wayne Boyker. We're here every day. I'm sorry. Every, every Monday from 3 to 4. I've got my friend uh, Rick Esser in here. He's going to do Speedle Trivia. Ellen Berg just left. <laughs> He's here. A musical memory is from 12 to 2. And I got a good friend of mine, Ray Zirkel. He's here, too. He was here a couple of years ago, and he's been to England. He checked out um, Liverpool, and we're going to talk about that. And I think Rick's song that he picked out is going to tie into everything. So I'm going to start out with a little bit from the BBC, and then we're going to go into the show. I'm Ringo, and I play the drums. Uh, well, I'm Paul, and I play the uh, uh, bass. I'm George, and I play a guitar. I'm John, and I, too, play a guitar. Sometimes I play the fool. Okay, just a little bit there from the BBC. So, uh, like I said, I've got my friend uh, Ray Zirkel. Ray, haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? Good. How are you? Doing okay. I'm excited to hear about, uh, well, we talked about this. Ray, Ray was here a couple of years ago. We talked a little bit about your trip to England. Yeah, very, we touched on it a little bit. But uh, but today we're going to touch down a lot about good, that. Good. And we're going to have some good Beatle music and Rick, you're here too and your, your song is going to go along with right, what we've, we've got. Right, we've got a another Beatles trivia song picked out for today. Oh, that's great. So, all right, then we'll do the shout outs and stuff a little bit later. Let's just get on with some more Beatle music. I call your name. All right, Ray, uh, it seems like you're not shy to talk on the radio. So. Oh, no, not at all. This is something I wanted to do when I was a, even a teenager. Well, you know, the opportunity's here for you. we Maybe. got spots. And, and you do have some days off during the week. That's right. Uh-huh. So. We'll have to do Ray's record review or something like that. <laughs> well, there's on WRLR, there's as many formats as there are DJs. So it's it's not a formatted radio station. Just, we've got, uh, Rick knows, we got from, well, I... You just got to, people just have to go on the website, WROR.FM, and they'll check out, there's so many different formats. Yep. But here nor there, I just want to talk to you about your trip. Now, when did you go to England? Uh, 2003, mm-hmm. and uh, basically it was kind of a, you know, it's one of those 
dream things you think that maybe you'll get the chance to go and you know i kind of always just put it off on the back burner you know having kids and struggling through like everyone else never really thought i could uh, put it together but uh what happened was in 2003 of course this was right after 9-11 so airfares were cheap hotels were cheap everything was cheap so um my wife did not want to go for whatever reason. She said, you know, she knew that a buddy of mine uh, that I grew up with, uh, he also was very into music. Not as much Beatles, but he was into the whole rock and roll thing, too. And uh, when I told him that I found airfares and hotels really cheap, he said, yeah, let's go. You know, so it was kind of a let's go spur of the moment thing. So uh, put together a little package and uh, off we went. And um, it was one of the most exciting things I've ever done. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, when you, you get out and uh, start roaming around the city, you're kind of, you're on your own for the most part. We didn't go with any tour or any package, anything like that. So we were able to free freely do what we wanted to do mm-hmm. and uh, to go and sit on the stairs of Abbey Road and just sit there and go, oh my God, you know, and walk ah. across the street and, mm-hmm. and do all the things that, uh, I did one guided tour, which was a two-hour guided guided tour uh my buddy went off and did something else but, but so i i stayed on that one he took us all around all the different spots man um rick i don't know if you got a chance to look at ray's book he's got some cool shots of the abbey road the zebra lines oh, there really and uh we're going to talk a little bit more about that but uh interesting he's got so many pictures there. and ray and i are both photographers so you've yeah. got excellent pictures a lot of times you go to people's houses they go look at my photographs and, the family, <laughs> and i'm like yawn you well know? i put a nice little book together one because it was a, a, a special trip too i knew a lot of people were going to ask about various pictures so i put i put nice little captions in there uh show exactly what what, what i was taking pictures of oh. Um, you know, if it's the train station from a hard day's night, somebody else wouldn't know that unless you describe it to them, yeah. you know, so, um, but yeah, I, like I said, I put a nice little, uh, book together okay. and, uh, well, it, let me, let me hit an old one. This is from the BBC and it's, it's weird because it's the first hit that Phil Spector had and I forget the name of the group. It wasn't the Ron Nets, it was before that, but then Phil Spector went on to do, um, Let It Be and some of John's work. So this is really early Beatles. To know, know, know her is to love, love, love her. Just to see a smile makes my life worthwhile. It's just to know, know, know her is to love, love, love her. And I do, and I do, and I do, and I do, and I do.
And I'm not what I appear to be Of all the love I have won or have lost There is one love I should never have crossed She was a girl in a million, my friend I should have known she would win in the end I'm a loser And I lost someone who's near to me I'm a loser And I'm not what I appear to be Although I laugh and I act like a clown Beneath this mask I am wearing a frown My tears are falling like rain from the sky Is it for her or myself that I cry? I'm a loser And I lost someone who's near to me I'm a loser And I'm not what I appear to be deserve such a fate I realize I have left it too late And so it's true pride comes before a fall I'm telling you so that you won't lose all I'm a loser And I lost someone who's near to me I'm a loser And I'm not what I appear to be Okay, I'm a loser. Uh, John Lennon, written song. Uh, during the song, we're looking at Ray's pictures here from, uh, and that's that is in uh, that's London now, right? No, Liverpool now. That's still Liverpool. Okay, we, we had a uh, opportunity to. Uh, I wasn't going to go up there. It was kind of out of the blue. It kind of happened at the last minute. They, uh, uh, I, I found something on Virgin Railways that it's called Saturday Day Out. And uh, if you hop on the train early in the morning and you get up there and you come back in the same day, it was like a, a quarter of the price of what was normally charged. So made our minds up. We got to the train station, zoomed up there, and um, was able to find somebody that gave us a two-hour guided tour of the, of the city and then was able to stop in and see the Beatles story, which is a uh, uh, their version of the Beatles Museum. And it was, to me, it was uh, it could have been a lot better. <laughs> mm. But uh, anyway, it was a great, it was, it, it was to go up there again, stand in front of uh, uh, Strawberry Fields and the, all their boyhood homes and uh, Penny Lane, uh, where everything looks exactly the way the song describes it. Oh, there's, uh, it there's no feeling like it if you're a fan. And so, uh, man, we we had a great day. So, and then got by the time we got back to London, it was probably like ten, eleven o'clock at night. But well worth it. Well worth the Liverpool tour. It and made the whole trip. There, there's a picture of you sitting in the booth at the cavern. And no, down the street from the cavern. Okay. There's a uh, there was a uh, bar that they used to hang oh, out I see. in okay. even before they were of age, uh -huh. and uh, called the Grapes, mm -hmm. and uh, they used to go there. And there's a, the the funny part about the picture is uh, Paul's wearing I think John's glasses upside down on his face, <laughs> so they do look a little uh, they look a little liquored up yeah, yeah. for youngsters. Uh -huh. And uh, Pete Best is sitting there, so this is well before Ringo. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the two, you can sit in the same spot as the the picture on the wall with them in it. Oh, that's so cool. It's very yes, it is. Yeah, um, uh, where I work, a, a man stopped in. He had a, an English accent, and uh, him and his wife. And I said, "Wow, you know, I, I like that English accent. I'm I'm really into the Beatles." And he goes, "The Beatles? I used to drink with them." <laughs> Didn't everybody? <laughs> I said, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah." And then then the wife is like slapping him. His name is. Tony Musell, it's spelled out muscle, but he pronounced it Musell. I said, why don't you come on the show? You could talk about it. No, no, no. And he was like in the 70s, so he was the right age. Yeah. And, and I kind of believed him. 
So I don't know because he was like shying away from it. He's like, you know, it, it's just something that we did back then. It's, it's no big I deal. I would say I want visual proof. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't want to be on the show, so maybe you're I right. Think he was maybe, pulling you know, away. Everybody <laughs> drank with him. Everybody yep. saw him, and everybody, you know, I've talked to several people too. With, with they say with the with the cool accent, and you go, oh, where are you from? And they're like, oh, you know, Birmingham or you know Manchester or whatever. Oh, I saw the beat. Everybody saw him. But uh-huh. I do know one lady for a fact that had, uh, comes in where I work. Her sister still lives there and lives in Liverpool still and she definitely she's got the proof she's got the, the uh signed all the signed stuff from when they were young very cool uh wow. items so boy Be- Beatles fan heaven right there That's oh yeah great. wow okay well I think I got something else lined up here oh I want to talk to you about Liverpool and Ringo's home because the next song I want to play is Ringo singing Liverpool 8 oh okay and uh, any anything about Ringo's um, house? Just that it's at the it's on a very uh, the, the row homes. They're they're all, every house almost looks identical. Right. Is that like you saw across the universe? Yes. Now they had that that chat where you would see downward, and is that they had row houses? They were divided by brick walls. Uh, just, just well, like, you couldn't see the back of them; you could only see the front. And it, like I said, okay. it's probably twelve feet across the front of the house. Oh, I mean, it's very gosh. small, and yeah. then, you know the doorway, and each house is connected to the next house. Oh. And um, so it looks like you're looking down a long alleyway of of uh, you know front of homes, and uh, at the very front of that again as you saw in the pictures was a bar that Ringo used on the front of his sentimental journey that's right LP yeah. wow. and um, uh, so that's still there and the home was going to they were actually going to not save that home and they had a big petition come up and they have managed to save it now okay. uh, so it looks like all four homes are, are going to be saved historical now. landmarks so. yeah okay this is what that sounds like Liverpool 8 I was a sailor first I say Liverpool and Ray, you've been there. Yes, sir. That's great. We're looking at some more pictures here. Um, you even got uh, the gravestone of Eleanor Rigby. Right. We were talking about that and wondering if Paul really came up with that out of the blue but in uh, whatever it was, 66, or it was somehow uh, buried in his subconscious because it just seems like such a coincidence. Hmm. Yep. I don't know. I mean, there he it is. He claims it was Eleanor Braun. It's from the I've girl, heard from that, Help that yeah. uh, inspired the name Eleanor. Mm. Well, the Turtles came out with Eleanor yes. right at that same time. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. Very good. Okay, well, let me play Sexy Sadie from uh, the White album. We all know who Sexy Sadie is, right? Yeah, Mara Rishi's. That's mm-hmm. right, yeah. yeah. And here we go. Say 
Okay, Sexy Sadie, that was John talking about the Maharishi. Uh, man, Ray, we're just so uh, enthralled by your photographs here. There's just so much history. Rick, what do you think? Isn't it great? They're absolutely beautiful. Why, oh, thank you. Um, Maybe I should make a book. You know, <laughs> well, you did. I can't tell did. the difference between a, a postcard and a photograph. They're that They're that. Matter of fact, Clear. you did have the com, uh, comparison, right. store bought postcard with your photograph, and they look, right. they look so close. Yeah, they might be. I, I I don't remember if they're on. If uh, anyone has a Facebook page, you can go to Ray Zirkel Photography, which is Z I R K L E Ray Zirkel Photography, and I think some of these might be on there. All you have to do is like it, and you can go in and look uh, like the page, and you can go look in all you wanted photos. And I think. The London ones are on there. Mm-hmm. If not, maybe I should put them on. They might be on my personal page and not the photography page. But uh, very good. Well, you've been photographing for a long time, so you yes. know what you're doing. Huh? Uh, over thirty. Well, over twenty five years, let's say. Yeah. All right. Rick, any comments about the photographs that you've seen here? Well, they're. And if, like I said, we were talking about if somebody's interested in going over and they were, oh, well, how do I find all these sites? There's a book that I don't know if it's still in print or not called uh, The Beatles London. And what that does was it almost gives you a guided how to get there, where the maps, it gives you various maps on where these locations are at. Mm-hmm. It breaks London up into different um, sections so that you can take a section at a time and see all the different places. And some of them, gets, it gets a little tedious. You don't have to go and see every park bench that Ringo sat on. But <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go to the Hard Day's Night train station, and you can go to, of course, uh, Let It Be uh, Rooftop, uh, Apple Headquarters, rather. Right. Uh, and just, um, it's, 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 it was a handy guide. I used it thoroughly. And then, of course, there are guided tours that uh, people will take you on also. But I wanted to see some of it on my own. I Wait, what is the name it. of that guide again? Would you repeat that? The Beatles that? London. The Beatles London. Yes, it's a book okay. uh, put out probably, I would wager, over uh, 20 years ago. But you can still find okay. it, I think. at least You can probably even just Amazon it or eBay, and you can still purchase it. And I know it's been republished several times. Hmm. Uh, there's one called the Beatles England also, which has probably got better sections maybe for Liverpool also. Right. But I've seen so many of these photographs that you've taken in magazines and yeah. n- that you've seen them in person. That's, re- that's amazing. It now, was fun. Th- Ray, this picture of Penny Lane, is that the bus stop? Or yes, is that, right here is that's the, the bus stop. Uh, yeah, that's okay. the actual. Well, the bus stop is the turnaround right here oh, in the okay. middle. Okay. So the people would wait on the uh, okay. in the center section here while the bus is. Co- it's a turnaround or whatever they want okay. to call it. And you pointed out that the barbershop. Yeah, still barbershop there. still there. The all the other things that uh, he kind of talks about in the song are, are, believe it or not, there. Well, that's cool. I'm going to play the spots, and we're going to get on to. Rick Esser's section. His song will be Penny Lane, and then we'll talk about it before and after the song. Stay tuned. You're listening to 98.3 FM, WRLR LP, Round Lake Heights, Illinois. ABC Rental Center is a proud sponsor of WRLR 98.3 FM radio. ABC Rental Center has been servicing Lake County since 1976 and can handle your home project equipment rental needs. Budget rental trucks are also available. ABC Rental Center is located in the heart of Lake County, Illinois, just west of Route 83 on Rollins Road in Round Lake Beach, and is open seven days per week. For additional information, Information, owners Paul and Polly can be reached at 847-546-7844. Oak Hill Supportive Living in Round Lake Beach is dedicated to providing for the concerns of an aging parent and helping hand. Oak Hill is a new facility that recently opened with apartments for seniors. The staff assists seniors with personal care, meals, and an active social life. Financial assistance is also available. Oak Hill Supportive Living Community is located at 76 East Rollins Road in Round Lake Beach. For more information, Stephanie can be reached at 888-466-1824. Their website is www.oakhillslc.com. Hi everybody, listen to The Myths hosted by me, Tony Young. On Mondays from 4 to 5 in the afternoon. That's on WRLR 98.3 LPFM. Anything goes on The Mix. Hey, Lake County, you have a new voice in the morning. 
Wake up, listen, and call in each weekday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. to Paul Lepic and Angie Cook on Lepic and Company. Talk about breaking news and current events or laugh with them about crazy entertainment items by calling the studio line at 847-380-9957. They will update you on current news, weather, traffic, sports, and stocks to help get you on with your busy day. So for laughs and talk with a local touch, tune in. Listen and call Lepic and Company at 847-380-9957, your source for talk in Lake County. Arr! We be under attack. Man the long nine. Arr! Prepare to be boarded. Flagship starboard bow. What? No, not by the enemy flagship. By garbage. Me beautiful ocean be full of it these days. Many of folk don't know that when they throw their trash on the ground, it eventually makes its way into the ocean. So lend us a hand by always recycling and disposing of your trash properly. And learn more what you can do to keep the ocean healthy at KeepOceansClean.org. Brought to you by the Keep Oceans Clean Alliance and the Ad Council. Okay, welcome back to Wayne Boyker's Beetle Hour. I'm here every Monday from 3 to 4. My guest, Ray Zirkel, is here with Rick Esser, and we're looking at his photographs from Liverpool. Very cool. Um, Rick, this is your section now. Um, you can right, just take right. it away, and then I'll put the song on. Okay, well, I selected the song Penny Lane today for the Beatles trivia section of Wayne Beatles. Um, Penny Lane was written by Paul McCartney on a piano that was decorated in psychedelic rainbows. The song was named after a region in Liverpool where John Lennon lived as a child for his first five years. Um, Penny Lane is a very important landmark that's sought out by many British fans touring Liverpool. Penny Lane is also the name of a bus stop in in Liverpool. Uh, the actual song is a track from Magical Mystery Tour and was released as a single in 1967. What's interesting about the song Penny Lane is it never hit number one in the United States. The Turtles recorded a song called Happy Together, and Happy Together was in the number one spot, preventing Penny Lane from hitting number one. Um, Penny Lane was considered an experiment by the Beatles in what was labeled pop affability which was a tool of mind expansion. Um, Better examples of pop pop affability included the song Flying, Blue Jay Way, and Strawberry Fields Forever. What John and Paul and George felt was if somebody listened to Magical Mystery Tour, they could expand their consciousness by just listening to the songs. Another important fact about the song Penny Lane is Paul McCartney hired David Mason to play the piccolo trumpet solo on Penny Lane. Um, Paul heard Mason on television perform Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 and asked Mason to perform the trumpet solo on Penny Lane. And George Martin also did the piano work on Penny Lane. And Wayne, we talked before about George Martin being the fifth Beatle. People don't realize how many songs George Martin actually played piano on, and there, people thought it was Paul McCartney. Especially in the, the early piano. days, right? right. Yeah, yeah, especially he, in the early and days. And he had so many brilliant ideas. Even with Here, There, and Everywhere, he had him sing Barbara Shep Quartet in the background. Just little things like that. He right. was the fifth Beatle. Right. So this is Penny Lane from the album Magical Mystery Tour. Penny Lane, there is a bar for sure.
All right, Penny Lane. Paul said that was part fact, part nostalgia. Yeah. Great pick. Well, you know, I mentioned that that's where John Lennon spent his first five years, but Paul wrote the song. Paul also spent a lot of time in Penny Lane. Mm-hmm. I think it was on their mutual bus routes is where right, he got right. it from. Yeah. He had to, to get to John's house. He had to go through Penny Lane, so I think that's really where it came from. And, and you saw it firsthand? I saw it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's great. And... uh Rick was asking, you saw the barbershop, did you look in the window? No, and check I did <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of shot it from across the street, but no, I did not. I, you'd think I would have gone over there to see if the pictures of the heads you came to know or whatever yeah, it is is he said actually the there. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it was my understanding that the, the barber you know, took pictures of heads, right. and he put them on his front window. Right, so you could pick out the hairstyle you want. Right. <laughs> and what about the, the fire engine did you see the fire station there anywhere but uh actually i don't remember <laughs> I, i'm gonna have to go back and look no the uh it's a clean I, machine there know? is a, it's a clean machine <laughs> and uh the the one cool thing there's a restaurant that's also there and they have the words to the whole song up above the door which i took a picture of that um no i don't actually don't see a firehouse in there in the pictures but who knows yeah blue suburban skies i saw the blue suburban skies in the roundabout (laughs) very good it's so cool to uh, talk to someone that's been there and 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 actually bringing back the photographs and showing us so yeah that's i like to do that and i'd also like to go to vegas and see the have you seen that the beetle show the love show no i want to see that i've I've, all i've got is a cd which is good you got to do that yes the cd is wonderful um I don't know how it would ever look if they ever tried to put it on film, but uh, probably not near as good. I'd like to have a traveling show and come to that this That would area. also be nice, yes. Yeah, but it's supposed to be so elaborate with the strobe lights, the black lighting, the track right. pieces, and wow. Well, it'll be on my bucket list. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's a place. Wayne, he called. Well, he didn't call. He talked to me, and he wanted to hear this is Happiness is Warm Gun from Across the Universe soundtrack. It's happiness I is Warm so Gun from Across the Universe soundtrack. Rick, take it away. Okay. I'd like to do a shout-out to my friend Tony. He works for Illinois Instruments in Johnsburg. And also, I'd like to do a shout-out to his wife, Laura. Laura works for Edward Jones in Mundelein. Also, Tony and I play together in a band called The Oracles, and a couple of weeks ago we recorded the Beatles song, You're Gonna Lose That Girl, and we'd like to play it over the air. Yeah. Okay, we played this last week, but there were technical difficulties. Nobody could tune in and listen to it. Right. The streaming was down. We enjoyed it, but let me shout out to Tony and Gurney, and also a Tony in Fox Lake. She's a good listener. And Pete, Pete, you got a call. You haven't requested anything for a while. Okay, this is the Oracles. You're going to lose that girl. Take her out tonight and I will treat her like 
Okay, the Oracles with Rick with uh, great guitar, guitar work and, okay. and the harmony was good. So I, I enjoyed it. We recorded that using a little Zoom H2N recorder. Did okay. two takes on it. Okay. And um, the Zoom is an, an incredible piece of technology. Mm-hmm. Just to, if you listen to the quality, uh, I don't know if the stuff being recorded in big studios is much better. It's probably very overproduced. Well, we talked. You stopped by the shop where I worked uh, over the weekend, and the Beatles only had a four-track recorder. Whenever. Right, right. The, yeah, the very beginning and was four-track. That's pretty much what you had. I know it. I know so, it. Very good. Um, I don't know. Let's let's talk some more about uh, Liverpool. You got anything else? Uh, um, well, you were telling me about the zebra things, about how you coordinated with your wife to, to photograph off the computer. Yeah, that was Crossing Abbey Road. If, if anybody ever gets an opportunity, go and Google or just, you know, use any search engine and look up Abbey Road Studios, and there will be a link to their webcam on there. And it's fascinating. You can, at any time of the day or night, you can can literally go on there and see people <laughs> walking across that the zebra mm-hmm. uh although somebody just i read somewhere recently that they they moved it and i can't understand where they moved it or how well i heard years ago that they wanted to uh bypass the street so because of traffic so the street would just keep on uh, the traffic would continue but that would free up the zebra thing for well, that people. means they messed it all up <laughs> well it would it'd be less dangerous to, yeah to well we, i was telling wayne here when uh, we were trying to shoot the picture it was me and my buddy so each of us each had to take the camera and try to shoot so he's trying to you know shoot the picture of me and at the meantime watch over his shoulder so he doesn't get hit by a car because uh it is a busy street believe it or not so mm-hmm. but i lucked out i got a a, a red uh, double-decker bus in one of my shots that i was walking across so i thought I, that that did it for me so well, it's a famous story with george auditioning for john on a double decker bus there you go it all ties in uh-huh very good it's it's been real fascinating and you know we're talking about a two-hour show that we could have really had a decent two-hour show listening to all that you've seen of tall it. tales well, you've got proof to back it up i That's saw the right. photographs so all right uh george wrote a song called apple scruffs and it's pretty much about the groupies that hung around Apple. Yeah. But I kind of consider that Beatle fans, Apple fans. So I uh, guess they might have been a little more uh, intense, but <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> they but practically lived outside of Apple. That's right. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Paul, when he lived with the Ashers, there was a story that uh, Papa Asher had to take him upstairs out a window. They had to like shimmy across the ledge. I believe and, that. And go into the neighbor's house and out the garage just so he could get out. Yeah. So boy. Anyway, this is Apple Scruffs, one of my favorites. Good from, tune, good tune. From George.
Okay, that's pretty much our show. I got another minute. We can talk a little bit. Ray Zirkel, thanks for coming in. I hope My you come pleasure. in again. It was, it was exciting, fascinating, and boy, I kind of lived through those pictures of the vicarious thing. Sure. And Rick, always good with your spots. Um, Thank you. Um, yeah, I just got a, a little bit of time left. Uh, any any thoughts about well, it? Well, I just want to let our listeners know that the uh, Beatles trivia is going to change a little bit starting next week. We've decided to go with the 100 top Beatles songs according to Rolling Stones. So next week we're going to pick the number one Beatles song, which is actually A Day in the Life according to Rolling Stones. And so we've got the next... 100 weeks, we're going to cover the top 100 Beatles songs. That's good, yeah. Uh, Bish, the owner, he suggested that, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's a great idea. As a matter of fact, what I want to do later on is uh, do some Beatle roulette, and people can call in with a number. It'll correspond with um, the number of the song, and we'll, we'll just play that. That'll We'll do that next week, too. So, but anyway, thanks, everybody, for, for joining us, and Ray and Rick. It was a pleasure. It was a great show. I really enjoyed it. Yep. We'll you know, do another one. An hour goes by really quick. Okay. Thanks again. Everybody have a good week. Hope you tune in next week and enjoy. You're listening to 